is a second-hand bookstore. I think it's still there, Britpunks. And they had a stall of books in front going for 25, 10 cents. And there was a little book there for 10 cents in Latin, The Confessions of Augustine. I grabbed a streetcar and went up to see old Archbishop McNeil and asked him if my father would pay the fees when he let me into the seminary. He said, go oh, easily, uh, grab me. But I said, I don't want to go to the one you're building. I want to go to the old Sulpician Seminary in Montreal. We went out there. Here was this enormous building, magnificent, but I hadn't changed my mind. I wanted to go to the Sulpicians in Montreal. Until I asked him, I said, who are you dedicating it to? And he said, St. Augustine, not of uh, Canterbury, but St. Augustine of Africa. So I said, that that's where, uh, this is where I want to go. And somehow, old Augustine has stayed with me down the years. Here we are, Father Jim, in this St. Augustine Parish, which has so many memories for you, I'm sure, and it does for me. Because I remember when I came here as a, as a young teacher, and I saw this City of God by St. Augustine. And then, as I started to wonder about all the different personalities on the windows here, I said, what do they have to do with a Notre Dame education? Because the City of God is, uh, is what Atha Murray generally tried to establish here at the campus. And these, all these people here are part of the citizens of the City of God in his mind. And Augustine, of course, was big in his life. It centered his life. What has that meant to you down the years? Well, St. Augustine is, is a, a thinker, an early thinker in the church. He was very important in the history of the church. And I think for, for the Murray, uh, these, these, these things, I mean, they look rather eclectic, here, all these windows, but in fact, they all fit together with this idea of the city of God. Uh, St. Gregory the Great and St. Leo the Great, early popes in the uh, fifth or sixth century. And they established the ground for the what they call the age of faith. Yeah. Can you? Can, uh, that's yeah, what I well, heard, I mean, uh, we have to remember too the the Roman Empire was really big and uh, uh, well organized and controlled absolutely everything, and uh, it deteriorated, and the whole of Europe fell into chaos. And the the Christian Church was what became the 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 leader, and these two popes, they were the leaders of the of the Christian community of the Church. And they were the ones that established uh, 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 norms and uh, brought civilization together. And they fought a lot of the heresies within the church and really created the church as a body that could give purpose and meaning to the, to the European culture. And so we move up the ages here. And you have Benedict, it was uh, part of the monastery tradition, and Francis. Um, and again, one has to remember the a lack of culture, the lack of civilization, and uh, Benedict established these uh, centers of prayer and faith, and especially education. And uh, they gave that culture, uh, they, they established it firmly for the European tradition, but like most of it comes from there. The monastic movement, which Benedict started, he wrote the rule for it. Francis comes uh, in the 12th century, uh, when the, the church, you know, you have educated people and non-educated people, uh, rich people and poor people, mostly poor people. And um, Francis was absolutely scandalized by that. Uh, he came from a rich family. So he went into the presence of his father and he took off all his clothes. Uh, he renounced everything he had and he lived poorly with nature. But Francis saw the unity of nature. Everything was important to him. So now we're into the, this is the 12th century here with, with Aquinas and more. Well, Thomas Aquinas, um, a great, great, great intellectual. Thomas was able to take all of the Greek philosophers and re-read re them in the light of the Christian faith. And again, see what was true and real and how it helped understand the gospel and how the, how the gospel was able to help us understand the Greeks. And so Thomas More, how does he fit into the windows here? Well, uh, Thomas, of course, is in a time of I English history that is uh, very difficult and very complicated. Uh, Henry VIII uh, kind of ruling and ruthlessly without any values and things like that. And uh, Thomas stands up to him. And because of that, of course, uh, 
Thomas was beheaded and he became a martyr. So now we meet two uh, desperate uh, characters that don't really fit into the pageantry we have before. One is Jean de Brebeuf. It's um, difficult these days to kind of figure out all, all of this, you know, the whole question of uh, did we take the culture away, did we try to, in, in, you know, enculturate the faith? I think they did. Uh, they lived with them, you know, and, uh, and uh, they tried to see the connection between the two. Uh, you know, it was done on a very small scale, but then, of course, things got larger and larger, and then you, lo you lose a lot of those niceties, and you begin to be pushing and shoving, and that's the we got to where we are now. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, Newman, Newman, you know, I think the, the big thing, again, you have a, a fellow who is uh, both a, a saint and he's just been declared a saint by the church recently, but he's a man of great moral uprightness and of great intellect. So we have the past, which is where we see we, we can find God, but also the present. And the present always looks so chaotic. The city of God is, 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 is the presence of Christ, the church within the world. It's not something that just we look back to, we do, but only to understand where we find Christ now. And that's very much what Father Murray was all about. All these people that you talk about here, these scholars and saints, are all part of the uh, conversation yes. that has gone down through the ages and uh, uh, part of the heroes of the past that have, that have kept it ever present yeah. in order to be and realized. And that's precisely what he wanted his students to become. Yeah. You know, people who knew the tradition, so we, he was schooled in the past, there's no question you had to know history, you had to know where we come from, but also people who are aware of what's going on today and can put the two together and become leaders.